Hello traders, my name is Tomasz Wiśniewski, I'm a chief analyst in Alpari Research and Analysis and this is Daily Analytical Report. We have uh, many interesting movements right now on the market. Uh, so without further ado, let's start. Uh, on Friday, <coughs> calendar was uh, pretty uh, busy so far. We had inflation from Germany, uh, which uh, came in line with expectations. We had industrial production from Eurozone, which came much better than expectations. <coughs> the Euro is much stronger uh, right now, but it's not only the influence of this data, because um, uh, most recently Euro is just very, very strong. Uh, situation on euro dollar uh, changed uh, significantly uh, this is the pair where we do have a buy signal and uh, as for the data that uh, we are still about to um, uh, witness is um, ECB member uh, speech and also minor data from um, US and uh, the data important for the oil uh, market uh, <coughs> I'm sorry on um, on the weekend, we have an uh, IMF meeting, International Monetary Fund. Uh, on Monday, we will start with retail sales uh, from United States, so important uh, event for the American dollar. As this is the last day of the week, uh, we need to check the calendar for the next week. So on Monday, we do have retail sales uh, from US. On Tuesday, we do have inflation uh, from New Zealand. Uh, on uh, Tuesday, uh, also we do have average earnings uh, from the UK. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, we do have retail uh, price and CPI inflation from uh, UK. So definitely an important event. Uh, CPI also we do have on Wednesday. Uh, on uh, CPI, we do have um, uh, yes, we do have CPI from Eurozone on Wednesday. Uh, so inflation from UK and from uh, um, European Union and minutes uh, from um, uh, FOMC. Thursday is also busy job data from Australia, pack of data from Japan and retail sales from UK. So definitely next week will be important for the uh, British pound as you can see on Tuesday on Wednesday, on Thursday, tier one data uh, for um, British Pound. Friday will be surprisingly quite uh, quiet. We'll have overnight, uh, uh, I'm from Europe, so I uh, look from the European point of view, a very, very early morning, but <laughs> I don't know who wakes up at 5 a.m. in the morning. So it's the middle of the night. Uh, we do have uh, GDP from China and that will be it for the next Friday. So surprisingly, Friday is not very busy. Usually Fridays are packed with data, but next Friday it will be quiet. This is the calendar and uh, let's uh, look on the charts. Uh, remember that on Fridays are super interesting because on Fridays what you get is a, a weekly candle right so weekly candle sorts out everything uh, so today we're gonna fight for a weekly candle uh, this one on the euro dollar uh, okay this is not the weekly candle on the euro dollar we need to wait a little bit wait 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 uh, euro dollar here weekly I don't know why uh, the chart does not want to adjust. Yes, uh, we are back. I'm sorry we ha had a problem with the internet, but we are back. So this is the weekly candle. So we are fighting for a nice, um, let's say, piercing pattern. As for now, this is a piercing pattern on a, uh, on a weekly chart. So uh, opening of the second candle is lower than the close of the first one and the second candle closes uh, is about to close above the half of the first one so that is a uh, that is um, a piercing pattern which may promote a further upswing well buyers can even fight for the bullish angle thing which will be a super strong buy signal but we will see what is going to uh, happen piercing pattern can be significant enough <coughs> 
On our daily chart, obviously, we do have a small correction of the movement uh, from yesterday because movement from yesterday was uh, the strongest one uh, since the 20th of September. That's a pretty significant reversal, so maybe we'll have a small, uh, small drop right now. But uh, at the end of the day, we should uh, we, we we should finish this. Uh, this week with uh, uh, with a proper uh, proper upswing, with a proper buy signal. Uh, next one is the S&P 500, which respected this long-term uptrend line. As you can see here, they did not manage to create this uh, the same wave as at the beginning of the year. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, we do have a uh, we do have an upswing. Obviously, this line needs to be adjusted. Uh, here uh, what can we say about that we have this wide horizontal support um, as long as we stay above the uh, above the uptrend line and above the horizontal support we do have a, uh, you see this line needs to be adjusted as long as we stay above those two uh, the combination of this one and this one <coughs> we still have an uptrend we still have an uptrend and uh, this can be considered just a correction anyway the same as here as you can see two weeks bearish then a correction one two two weeks bearish then maybe a correction uh, that's why it is worth to look at the history because history uh, will uh, give us hints about uh, things that may happen in the future and Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin unfortunately what is going on here uh, yes Bitcoin is in a sideways trend slightly above the horizontal support it does not look like a reversal whatsoever this looks like a trend continuation pattern so a sideways trend uh, a very uh, small correction not even uh, not significant uh, above uh, support indicates that we might get another test of this area of this support so this is the current scenario uh, for the bitcoin so strong drop sideways trend correction and most probably a further drop American dollar to Canadian dollar uh, where uh, we have a reversal we have a false breakout here the price broke this horizontal resistance now we do have a correction but most probably this correction will end with a further upswing uh, nice resistance a breakout of this resistance and along with this black line will give us a proper proper buy signal <coughs> I'm sorry. So we need to see the breakout of this horizontal resistance, breakout of this trend line, and a further upswing. Now, gold. Gold is uh, one of those instruments that I wanted to tell you about. Uh, one of those instruments that have the strongest signal. Uh, because gold bounced two days ago from the lower line of the triangle they avoided the sell signal and went higher and this global sell-off triggered a positive sentiment on gold so we broke the upper line of the triangle and we, we broke this horizontal resistance here after the breakout broken resistance are normally tested as, sub as a support so it shouldn't be surprising that the price is going uh, low, uh, lower right now even can go deeper like here and then a bounce that is a proper scenario for gold and let me show you one thing i deleted those fibonacci lines because we were in a sideways trend so there was uh, no, uh, it, it was not necessary. We do have a FIBO where uh, we measure the uh, extension, uh, not extension, but uh, we measure the uh, how deep the correction can go, right? 
and the first 23.6 uh, was in line with the recent price movement support support resistance resistance fair enough 38.2 is also in line with recent uh, movements support resistance right looks promising 50 is also in line support and resistance obviously 61.8 is also in line with this so a support a support here which can be a resistance after the break of the, the 23.6 as we said the natural scenario is the price testing that as a support and then we need to look for a potential aim for a potential target and the potential target is here on 38.2 uh, if you want to buy now like stop loss here uh, on uh, on 12 dollars and take profit is on 20 dollars that's okay risk to re re reward ratio but not the best but uh, when the price will decline and make a reversal pattern then buy and then take profit here that will be a proper risk to re reward ratio and uh, risk worth taking so uh, maybe let's wait for that uh, WTI oil uh, what do we have on WTI oil is a bounce because the price met a mid-term uh, uptrend line and a horizontal support so combination of those two brought us a bounce uh, which keeps kind of the buy sentiment alive but the thing is well the long-term buy sentiment is still intact as you can see here that's a long-term uptrend line price being above the lower black line that's definitely positive uh, but the bearish pressure is kind of rising here so that we have a small bump maybe we'll have another test and it will all all will be sorted out here if we will have a reversal double bottom reversal or not potential breakout will um, uh, direct us to this long-term uptrend line and we will see what will happen from there a euro to swiss franc that's a flag that is a uh, horizontal resistance Mm, here and uh, as long as the price was below the midterm downtrend line this flag was bearish but then the price broke this downtrend line the price is breaking the horizontal resistance so this flag is not bearish anymore and it's no longer a flag it looks more like um, a channel up formation I think that the only hope okay here the only hope for the sellers can be the correction equality pattern actually I'm gonna place it here but uh, better color for you let's say like this so sellers may uh, pray for the correction equality pattern let's say is that in line with FIBO so now we are on 38.2 okay so this may result with a, uh, with a, a reversal we need to adjust this to the current situation I think that this is the best uh, why? Uh, support from here Resta support support resistance resistance so this lower line and this upper line and they're both significant so as you can see we have a small congestion here so we do have an upper line of the flag we do have 38.2 we do have a horizontal resistance uh, and this all may result with a, uh, with an upswing uh, with a drop the thing is that in the same time here though uh, that line that line is the neckline of the uh, head and shoulder formation, uh, head and shoulder formation, uh, which actually can be better seen on daily, like left uh, left shoulder, head and the right shoulder. But even if you don't see it, because it's a bit dodgy, yes, I can admit that this right sh shoulder is a bit dodgy. But if you don't uh, want uh, head and shoulder formation, then it is a double bottom formation, so uh, it's it, it's not really important. 
because both of those formations are, are, are bullish. Uh, and this is our buy signal. So the thing is that on Euro to Swiss franc we do have good trading signals, but uh, from both camps. To wrap that up, uh, the buy signal comes from the broken down trend line and double bottom formation, and the sell signal comes from the congestion of important resistances. How to trade it? Well, as always, price action saves the day because you need to know what is going to happen here. If we have the price action will show you a breakout, so the price will break the, those resistances, we'll have a buy signal. If the price will bounce from those, uh, from that area, from those resistances, we will get a sell signal. That's why the price action saves the day. Uh, British pound to American dollar uh, lost a bit of momentum. Look, we draw here. When the price was here, we draw a right shoulder. And the right shoulder happened, but it was uh, a little bit bigger. Okay, here. Head and shoulder formation was not used by the sellers yesterday for a breakout. So if the price does not want to go down, most probably it will go up. And this is the reaction, the price is going up. For me, cable lost a bit of technical relevance, so I'm not gonna uh, do anything with this. Uh, Australian dollar to American dollar uh, met uh, another resistance. So here we need to adjust the current situation. This is the closest resistance. We have a horizontal resistance. We have a horizontal support. Dynamic, uh, I think, lost a bit of relevance. And now we have to wait for the breakout. Upper line will give us a very short term buy signal. Why short term? Because uh, we have a, a dynamic resistance very close to this formation and the uh, breakout of the lower line of this formation will, will give us a sell signal. Canadian dollar to Japanese yen. That's a head and shoulder formation, left shoulder, head and right shoulder. We have a breakout of the downtrend line, false breakout. The price created a right shoulder, denied it, but it, cre it creates right shoulder again. So that, in my opinion, is a proper sell signal. We had a positive sentiment, but now we are back into negative. And that is, an, uh, that is a start of a uh, head and shoulder formation. Once this line will be broken, the head and shoulder formation will be almost certain. So buyers can still fight now, but the breakout of this green support, I think it can kill the demand. A breakout of this line will definitely kill the demand and will drive the price to the neckline here. Dollar index, uh, we need to mention this because as you saw on the chart with, uh, dollar, with gold and oil, uh, we do have different directions for commodities. So oil was going down and gold was going up. It is uh, the influence of the uh, stock market and the recent sell-off. Uh, funny enough, because for example, a few years ago, I remember when uh, that oil at the at the beginning of the year, I think 2016, oil was tied to the stock market. So every movement on the stock market and oil was explained by oil and the stock market. So when the stock market was going up, everybody said that oh, it's because of the rising price of oil. When the stock market was going down, everybody said, oh, it's because of the uh, oil price going lower. But now the situation changed. Now, apparently, high prices of oil, they uh, they heard the, uh, the companies and now the price of the oil is going uh, lower and the stocks are going lower. But at the same time, the gold is going higher and the gold is going higher uh, because of the global sell off. <laughs> So we do have two instruments which are uh, dependent on the dollar, oil and gold. Usually when dollar is stronger, commodities are weaker. When the dollar is weaker, commodities are stronger. Now dollar is weaker, uh, so gold is going up. Okay, fair enough. But with the stronger, with the weaker dollar, uh, oil is not going up, uh, which is, as we said, influenced by the stock market. 
So this divergence in the price of the commodities is quite interesting at the moment. Something for the fundamentals, for, for the fundamental traders. Australian dollar to Swiss franc. What we have here is this horizontal resistance. Uh, here we do have a horizontal support. Uh, we had this false breakout of the neckline, the shoulder formation. False breakout resulted to a further upswing. And now after an upswing, we do have a sideways trend. And this sideways trend should result with a further rise. Why? Because sellers had a chance. And now time for the buyers. Buyers almost uh, broke the uh, upper line of the triangle. And this one should result with a further upswing. Now gold, uh, silver, uh, gold is um, in a much better situation because gold is on the highest levels uh, since uh, the beginning of August and silver is on the highest level since the beginning, uh, since the 8th of, uh, uh, since the last week, <laughs> actually, this week. So this bump uh, destroyed the technical situation and we are still in a downtrend and on silver I don't see any positive sign like on gold. I'm sorry, we are back. Uh, American dollar to Japanese yen. Let's uh, look uh, here, sideways trend logged between the Fibonacci lines. That's why Fibonacci lines are important. And as, as you can see, American dollar to Japanese yen respects this support, breakout, support, breakout, resistance, support. That's a sideways trend and we are waiting for the escape from this line, up or down, to the upside or to the downside. Euro to British Pound broke the uptrend line and is testing the, it as a resistance. So broken support is being tested as a resistance, nothing that we didn't expect here, we draw this that it's a time for a reversal and uh, it is a reversal potential target is here it's this downtrend line along with 23.6 well, we, we, we may go as deep as 50% uh, because that horizontal resistance was crucial here we will see what uh, scenario the price will use even when the price will go like that like that below the uptrend line and test here and then drop that will be a legitimate signal to sell Uh, New Zealand dollar to Swiss franc here is definitely a buy signal because sellers had a chance for the head and shoulder formation, left shoulder, head and right shoulder. They did not manage to break the neckline. They broke the line connecting those uh, lower highs significant. And now we are below the major downtrend line. And below this major downtrend line, uh, it should result with a, with a reversal, with a drop. But the thing is that the price is not going down. Uh, the price is in a sideways trend, so we are waiting for the breakout. We are waiting for the breakout of this line. The breakout of this line is uh, more and more probable uh, than the breakout to the, to the downside. Uh, now Australian dollar to New Zealand dollar. Mm, here we do have a uh, false breakout. And now the price is going lower. So that false breakout sorts out the bearish sentiment here. I don't like those movements, they are a bit choppy. If I had to connect like a low, so I would do it like that. So that's a triangle. Uh, price breaking those lows, the combination of the horizontal support and this dynamic support, the price going there. And uh, that will be a significant signal to sell. Uh, Swiss franc to Japanese yen, that is a, a three bearish weeks in a row, a negative signal, <laughs> another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13 bearish days in a row price means horizontal support maybe we'll have a bounce most probably we'll have a bounce well further downswing is more probable always but after such a strong decline really uh, we should get some kind of a correction and i'm not telling you that it's a proper buy signal i would never trade it because it's a counter trade uh, but just from the experience and uh, how I feel it, it's not a trading signal whatsoever uh, because I don't open positions like that. I need strong fundamentals, strong grounds, uh, strong reasons to open a position. This is just a uh, just my outlook on this that it should result with a with, with a bounce, but it doesn't it doesn't have to, right? Uh, British pound, Japanese yen still locked in a sideways trend, waiting for the proper movement, uh, for the proper breakout, breakout to the upside buy signal, breakout to the downside sell signal. DAX, uh, DAX opened today a little bit higher, but is suffering again. Uh, here we have an opening. Uh, but the thing is that as long as we are below the neckline, the sentiment is negative on a weekly chart, that candle will not be good, that will not be a good buy uh, situation. A weekly candle breaking the neckline of the head and shoulder formation, well, that is bad. That, mean, that means troubles for the traders in Frankfurt. Nikkei, still on the major uptrend line, still okay, but very close to a major sell signal and also uh, look at this false breakout above the horizontal resistance nasdaq nasdaq is going lower the aim is here maybe we'll have a small correction but the aim is on uh, 6300 6200 uh, dollars uh, points i'm sorry this, uh, this is where the so, uh, where the target is. We are on the midterm support. Uh, I, I don't think it will mm, uh, it will stop us from uh, from the further drop. So guys, that's the situation on the market. A uh, few interesting uh, setups. Definitely a great week in terms of the volatility and market occasions. I would say that the best one is on gold at the moment. Not that I'm a super fan of gold, I am, but uh, I always uh, try to uh, be as fair as possible. Also keep in mind this Australian dollar to Swiss franc, uh, because price getting uh, here, breaking this level, closing a day above this level would be a nice buy signal. Uh, gold, this one, and, uh, yeah, I think those two uh, setups are the hottest at the moment. So guys, thank you very much uh, for attending this uh, webinar, Daily Analytical Report with Valpari. I hope you enjoyed that. And now a short break after that, uh, well, we have half an hour break and after that webinar about uh, live trading. So I will show my strategy. I will show you my previous trades. I will explain you how I trade, what I do. I hope you will attend this webinar. I wish you all the best guys and um, see you in half an hour.